So good morning, good afternoon or good evening, in fact, wherever you're listening around the world today. Welcome to EV News Daily. It's a Saturday special. It's another interview show for you today. Well... In this month, uh, this month, January, I've managed to make January last an extra two days. To begin the year, I wanted to look at ways of getting people into EVs, whether that is ride sharing or hiring. I even hired a Tesla myself uh, to go through the whole experience. Or however they get into an EV, I think it's really crucial because once people have had a taste of electric power, they're more likely to consider it the next time they come to make a purchase. So whether that is hiring a car, whether that is using a service like electricmotoring.net, uh, with Paul and uh, what he does in the Chicago area. Check out electricmotoring.net if you want to hire one of his Teslas as an experience day or something or a longer term hire as well. Today, it's less about you doing the driving. Let someone else do the heavy lifting. It's you sitting in the back as a passenger of an EV. So a new company launched today in the UK. I got the press release come through and I thought this is going to finish off very nicely what we were talking about, ways of getting into an EV. But this is a new electric car shuttle service specifically to the airport here in the UK. Now, let's not, before you email me and message me, let's not make any excuses about this. Aviation is by far and away the worst thing you can do for pollution and for your emissions. You can turn down your heating by a degree for an entire year. You can drive an electric car and you can ride your bike as much as you can. All of that will be offset if you make a very short flight. Air, air travel is so bad. Uh, I know the uh, the numbers. Please don't email me. However, if you have to fly, if you are going to take a business trip or vacation and you are going to go to the airport, the least you can do is get there under EV power. And so a new company here in the UK wants to solve that. Wherever you are flying from, their aim is to get you there in an electric car. Let's find out more about a new company called Driven who want to put a few electric miles under your belts. And to tell us more about it is the CEO. Hello, Mark. Thank you for having me on, Martin. So the kind of elevator pitch, if you like, tell us about it. Okay, so what we want to do, we're taking people from from their home or from their office to airports in a different way, in a revolutionary way. So first of all, all of our vehicles are electric. Currently, the fleet is all Tesla Model X, probably adding the Tesla Model 3, maybe adding the Kia, the e-Nero. But for the moment, we're starting with the Model X. The reason we've chosen the Model X is because it allows us to provide three different aspects to the service, which we've called exclusive, premium, and eco. So where we're different is we're not just another airport transfer or taxi company taking people to the airport, even though we are electric and most of them aren't. What we also offer is a shuttle, so people can effectively just buy a seat so with the tesla model x we can have six people in there they can all have carry on and then the premium level service you have a seat but you also have an empty seat next to you which enables us to take four people which means you can also take hold luggage as well as carry on luggage and we're doing it as i said door to door if you wanted to take if you were money conscious and you wanted uh, perhaps even environmentally conscious and you wanted to take public transport then typically from your door you're going to either have to walk a reasonable distance potentially to a to a bus stop and then take a bus maybe to a train station and then take a train obviously better than if you take your own car because you with your own car you have to go to the car park which nowadays is pretty extortionate it's a fair distance from the airport you've got to take ages trying to find a place hope you can find a place that's not too narrow and you don't ding your doors or people don't ding yours and then you've got to find your way to the shuttle bus that you have to then wait for for ages and then go to the airport so we think that we're we're rivaling all of those different modes of transport by offering you a nice quiet luxurious environmentally friendly journey from your door to the airport so this is part ride sharing part executive transfer which is kind of the two ends of the spectrum you know coming coming together really so where did the idea for this come from one of my previous business interests so for about six or seven years now i've short and medium term accommodation rental in cambridge pretty much in line with when airbnb started certainly in cambridge and has grown since then i bought my first tesla about three years ago which was a model s and then i always wanted the model x but tesla had delayed it so i thought let's try the model s for a bit and then switched to the model x a couple of years ago the first six months just enjoyed it and then started to think put the two and two together with the model x and how much space there is in it in terms of people and luggage uh, and how wonderful it is being all electric it's just a lovely car and um, with the fact that we wanted to get people to and from airports for the business uh, and it came out of that and decided to get serious with it 
in the second quarter of last year and then we spent the rest of that time last year getting everything organised and today, the first journeys. So what flicked the switch three years ago then when you wanted the X but couldn't get it quickly enough so then you, you settled for the Model S but, but was it specifically a Tesla thing? Was it an electric car thing? What got you in an EV? It was an electric car thing, not necessarily specifically a Tesla. The Tesla was the best one, still is the best of its type, the Model X. Yeah, just the whole idea of electric, how it's cheap, it, environmentally friendly, as long as it's produced renewably, which all the Tesla electricity t- typically is for the superchargers. I do a lot of miles, do a lot of trips to Europe, and the free supercharging that they were offering was also a very, very big draw. Here in the UK, we've heard of, of uh, companies like uh, Tesla Loop. Uh, that was kind of the original one years and years ago when they got their first one and free supercharging was was included in Tesla's, uh, you know, back in those days. And so it hit the headlines for, you know, revolutionary shuttle service charges for free and they supercharge all the time. They still do supercharge all the time. But it seems to have taken longer for other countries around the world to catch on. There's a company in Sydney that do something similar with airport transfers. But why, I mean, like all great ideas, they, they, they seem so obvious when you hear about them, but why hasn't someone done this long before now? That's a very good question. So what we found is that generally the, the airport transfer business, the airport taxi business, is just an extension of existing taxi businesses. Most of them don't just focus on airports. And what people generally do is they just phone their local taxi company. Now, what that means is that almost all of the firms that run these operations tend to be based in a town or a city where the reverse in that we're going to be based at the airports which means that the airports will be our hub and we can spoke out anywhere from there whereas the typical your local taxi firm so for example there's one here in cambridge they may take you down to the airport but they always want to then come back to cambridge so they're very restricted in terms of how many journeys they can make and therefore effectively they're quite inefficient and that's reflected in their pricing isn't the same for us because we can keep keep running here that we can go to the airport away from the airport to the airport away from there and it doesn't matter where as long as we're coming back to one of the airports and there are relatively few of them that are major airports in in the uk and used a lot so you're always coming back to a central point so you can be very efficient with that which also makes an expensive vehicle like a tesla model x work for its money and makes it worthwhile whereas if you're just doing say three or four runs to an airport a day you can't justify that you can't justify the expense of of the driver so we've decided that the driver is a very very important part of the service if not the most important part of the service so what we've done is we have hired only ex-emergency service drivers police fire ambulance uh, and they're all been driving for many years and they are because of the skills training that they need required to do because of sometimes when they have to blue light and obviously then they go very very fast but they still have to drive very very safely they have to be hugely aware of what's going on on the road so they are the safest professional road drivers that you can get wow wow so this is um it's sustainable it's sustainable transport it's eco-friendly but also there is an element of luxury and performance about it as well. For for people who haven't been in an EV before, when they get inside the Model X, well, they'll be impressed, slightly blown away by it. Do you, are you expecting your drivers to have to do a little tutorial when they when people say, "Oh, how does the big sc- show us what you can do with the big screen?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot of oh, what does this? Do? What does that do? Oh, look at one of the first things <laughs> when they get in. Before they get in, obviously, it's the doors. So the drivers are well versed in pull up as as soon as you pull up and it's safe to do so open the doors everybody wants to be photographed next to it and then the next thing they say is my god look at the size of that screen that's huge look at all the things you can do that and we typically have the sat nav up with a little bit at the bottom with the the rear camera so you can see nice and clearly out the back even when the car's full the next comment is oh, i never get lost with that <laughs> yep yep, yep. <laughs> and, and then you often if there's there's a number of people in then there's a bit of banter about people who do tend to get lost on a regular basis and people who don't with that from a passenger point of view it's a pretty easy vehicle to operate you just sit in do your seatbelt up and just relax and enjoy the quiet essentially it's just it's so serene what configuration because some of the configurations of the model x when you are sitting on your own i mean it feels like you're in a, a big armchair so what what config is it the six the seven seater what configurations are you using 
So all of ours are seven seaters so that we can maximise the eco-friendly aspects and we can have six passengers in there, if, uh, which also enables us to offer, as I said, the premium service, which can fit four, effectively sitting on a sofa. It's almost like sitting in an armchair. It's so comfortable and because because it's an SUV, because you've got that extra height, you've got because the platform of the car is electric, it means you can go quite far forward with the front and quite far back with the back, which gives you lots of space in between. One of the things that I've seen people doing with the, the Model X when they've got it full of people, but they've also got luggage, they, and because the Model X can tow, it's rated to tow as well. Would you ever stick a trailer out the back, or is that just going too far? For the services that we're offering, all those three that I've described, the exclusive, the premium, and the eco, we don't need any extra towing capacity just for luggage it, when the car's say full of six passengers all on an eco we've we've spent a lot of time we had some quite good laughs as well but we spent a lot of time and had a little in, internal competition and somebody managed to win to see how much luggage we can fit in and what's the best configuration because it's important so the front boot is fantastic in the model x it's much better than the model s because we can fit three carry-ons in the front boot. So this is with a car full of driver and six passengers. So three carry-ons in the front boot. You can fit five carry-ons in the rear boot and still two, two large suitcases, two hold luggage. So there's plenty of room. Where we did think about potentially having a trailer or something on the back is for skis. Ah, yes, yeah. If you've just got a couple of people in the car, it's fine. You put the seat down, you put chuck the skis in. But if you want to take a group of four or more, then you need to start towing them somehow so for the moment what we've said to people is look if you've got skis or a surfboard or anything unusually side and you want to come with us we'll happily take you but you just got to give us a call and we'll work out whether you're going to be in one car two cars etc and see if that's going to work but we will be opening in geneva towards the end of this year or early next year and a lot of and in the winter season it's almost all people skiing and a lot of people rent their skis but a lot of people also bring their own skis so we will have a trailer for that undoubtedly now the occasional times that i've got a, an airport transfer that's been maybe a long distance and the driver said oh do you mind if i just pull in and uh, and fill up and of course what am i going to say no uh, so yeah of course so he pulls into the service station it's a comfort break as well how's that going to work with i mean obviously the range is as good as it gets on the model x but it, are you going to offer kind of comfort breaks and half hour 45 minute stops to supercharge or how's that going to work we're expecting the vast majority of our journeys to be within less than half of the range. So the range is about 250 miles, and the way the model works is we'll then come back to base. We've always got some cars on the road and some cars charging to make sure that we maximise the battery life so that we're not fast charging all the time or supercharging. And then we'll just switch out, put that one on charge and take the one that's full and just keep rotating them like that to make sure. So we should never need to charge whilst there are any passengers in the car so that we get them as quickly as possible from their front door to the airport's front door with with no interruptions other than if we're stopping to pick people up which is built into the schedule and they know how long it's going to take what time we're picking them up and what time they will arrive it's just struck me this is a quite a, a relaxed way especially for the motorway miles for the drivers obviously the tesla autopilot system is again uh you know, best in class. So once they're on the motorways, this is um, obviously the drivers are fully in control all the time and you, and you have the best of the best drivers. But it's a nice way to, to if you've got to drive a car, it's a nice way to, uh, to earn a living inside a Tesla, driving some people to the airport because they're always in a good mood going on holiday as well. But also with that technology, that kind of helps with things like fatigue and all those kind of things, I'm guessing. We've got a queue of drivers. We're, we've almost got to the stage where we've got a waiting list of drivers who can become a work for us. We're going to be growing very quickly. We expect to be in the region of 100 vehicles before the end of the year, um, which is going to need, we're going to need 250, 300 drivers at least for that, probably near a 500 with, with shifts and holidays, etc. We do need to recruit a lot of drivers. So we're more than happy for people to, to keep applying to us. Uh, and we're actively recruiting all the time and interviewing every day. Now, you are obviously uh, starting out uh, as, a, as a new company. And are you, are you, are you, uh, what are the airports that you're limited to to begin with? Okay, so people can book four journeys to pretty much any of the major UK airports. At the moment, if you, if you want to book for any of the London airports, the five major ones, so London City, Gatwick, Stansted, Luton and Heathrow, you can book a journey for today, for example, now. The next airports to come online in terms of when we're actually running journeys will be Glasgow and Edinburgh, where we're going to do journeys from the 1st of May. But you can book now. So if you say you book, you're going to be travelling from Glasgow and Edinburgh Airport, you've booked your summer holiday, you can come and book your shuttle. And what 
what we're saying to people is as soon as you've booked your flight, you know you need to get to the airport. So as soon as you book your flight, book the shuttle. Um, and our pricing and our scheduling model is structured so that the earlier you book, the cheaper it is. Yeah, that whole last minute dot com thing has, has gone away. That's 15 years ago. You know, waiting to the day before doesn't, you know, with, with anything, with flights and hotels, doesn't work anymore. So uh, as early as possible tends to be the, the, the case. And that, that's with you as well. Um, so if people are listening to this right now and they're curious. How do they get more details? How do they get in touch? So everything is on the website, drivenairport.com. Are you on social media and socials and stuff like that, Twitter and Facebook? Yeah, yeah so that's all gone live yesterday or today. I lose track of where we are now. Um, yeah, so, no, Twitter and Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm not sure if the Facebook is up and running yet. It sounds like uh, you've got uh, you've got a, a real winner on your hands, and uh, we're delighted to uh, to speak to you today. Anything in the EV space, uh, I know people listening to this uh, are super curious, super interested about as well, and always looking to uh, support anyone that is uh, is getting behind EVs. And a, a Tesla driver yourself uh, that has converted that uh, that passion into a, a business as well. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast, and and best of luck with everything. Thank you, Mark. No problem. Thanks very much for your time, Martin. So once again, thank you very much to Mark and the team at driven and uh, maybe it's something that uh, next time you go to the airport that will stick in your mind and you'll think you know what maybe i can get there under electric power the whole thing that uh, i first read a a chap called tony seba uh, first uh, time that i saw the phrase it's not about how many cars you electrify it's about how many miles you electrify so your domestic transport can well be electric but if it's sitting unused for 90% of the time. Mine's probably 95% of the time. Uh, Well, that's all well and good. What about those cars that sometimes barely take a break? Well, those commercial vehicles, those delivery vehicles, indeed those shuttle vehicles, if you can electrify those miles... Uh, it's so, so important and so uh, interesting to see uh, one company here in the UK putting some uh, some clean, sustainable miles under their belt. Well, thank you very much to everyone who supports this show on Patreon. It's been another incredible month in January for Patreon support going up. Uh, it's it's humbling. It's hard to believe. And thank you very much to everyone who's gone to Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash EV News Daily. If you missed the news, it's barely news, but if you missed a few weeks ago, uh, I was saying that the support that you've given this show over the last year, we started. I started doing it last January has given me the confidence to quit what has been a 25-year radio career. If you think I started working at the weekends when I was 15, sort of volunteering as as a Saturday job. So, and to pack in what was a 25-year radio career and make the move into doing podcasts full-time. I never thought I could, never thought I would. You've given me the confidence to do that. So thank you very much to everyone on Patreon. The financial support obviously pays for the podcast and the hosting and getting it out there. It's the moral support as well uh, that has really, uh, really given me a big boost in the last 12 months. Thank you so much. I can't even begin to tell you the difference you've made. Uh, Thank you very much to our premium partners, Phil Roberts at Electric Future. That's EF.energy doing those big solar projects, those commercial projects here in the UK. Hello to, I mentioned Paul at the beginning of the show, electricmotoring.net is his site. If you are doing uh, Tesla hire in the Chicago area, check out electricmotoring.net. And our third premium partner, Brad Crosby, who wants to support the show uh, because he believes in our mission and what we're doing. Thank you so much. Hello to our partners, David Allen. Thank you, David. Longtime supporter of this show, David. It is. Hello to OEM Audio of New Zealand. And if you are in New Zealand and you need those EV accessories, check out evpower.co.nz. Hello to Sasha Pallenberg and John, who is Beardy McBeardface on the Twitters. And all of our executive producers. Here we go. I like to give you a mention once a week. Thank you very much uh, to Alan Robson, who is at Scottish EV owner, Harold Gear Skalsveen, Ashley Hill, Biard Fuchstack, Bob Muir from gingercomputers.com in Dundee, Borislav Borisov, Brent Kingsford, Brian Thompson, Brian Weatherall, Brian Young, and his new podcast. Conf F uh, Conf T dot show. C O N F T dot show. Uh, it's all above my head because it's very clever network stuff. However, check out his new podcast. Hello to Cesar Trujillo, Chris Benson, Chris Hopkins, Damian Davis, Darren Bird, Darren Sant, Dave Dewson, David Finch, David Partington, David Prescott, Dirk Rutsatz, and Don McAllister of Screencasts Online. A lot of Ds support this show. Anyway, sidebar. Frederick Rovick, George Clargo, Jack Oakley, Jason Fan, Jeff Erbies, Jerry Allison, John Bailey, John Nodell, uh, John Timmis, 
Ken Morris, Kevin Mayerson, Lars Dallager, Lawrence D. Allen, Louis Hopkin, Luke Cully, Marcel Lohman, Marcel Ward, Martin Croft, Matthew Ellis, Matthew Gruby, Maz Shah and Mike Rogers. That's the M's. Neil E. Roberts from Sussex EVs. Thank you, Neil. Paul Seeger Smith, Paul Stevenson, Pete Glass, Philippe Calve, Raj Badwell, Rene Schneider, Rod James, Rupert Mitchell, Sarah McCann, Scott Callahan, Seiki Payne, The Limousine Lion in Sydney. Thank you for your email this week. Uh, Walter McVeigh, who's keeping an eye on how those ships are crossing with all those Model 3s to Europe and China. And Zach Hurst. There are 374 previous episodes of this show online for free where you get your podcasts from. No, 375, I think we're up to now. If you want to subscribe, uh, you get those podcasts first and free and automatically on your platform, even on YouTube as well. And if you could leave a little review in the meantime, that would be amazing. Come and hang out on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.